restricted versus unrestricted uh, model. Um, you will hear this term in a couple of places in the design of experiment, um, especially in the advanced level design of experiment, uh, where you have nested, repeated measure, split plot, hierarchical design. Anytime we have a model that consists of, we have a design that consists of um, mixed factors, both fixed factor and random factor, then this um, restricted versus unrestricted uh, terms um, are important. Um, so when you have a, for example, we have a fixed factor A here, and then, um, Okay, see, don't see my pen. So fixed factor A here and then a random factor B. Um, now their interaction, generally, if an interaction contains at least one random factor, so out of A, B, if it at least, if it contains at least one random factor, the entire interaction is considered generally a random factor or random effect. If that is the case, then we are not placing any restriction. So that is called unrestricted model. So here in this case, the variance is simply assumed as sigma square alpha beta. It is considered as completely random. Now, if we deviate from that general rules, um, then if we place some restriction, for example, that um, because it's a mixed factor, we may treat uh, A as a separately as a uh, fixed factor and B separately as a random factor when we talk about the interaction term. If that is the case, then we have both kind of fixed effect and some random effect in it. Then this is the restriction we are placing on that. Now to develop expected mean square or correct F statistics using both of this model, I have already produced videos um, that you can check. In this video, we'll be talking about basically um, the final question, which model to basically use between this restricted and unrestricted. If you're not familiar with expected mean square, please check those videos first. It's in the openeducator.com slash DOE um, module 12 um, in there. So let's go back there. So the question is, um, which model to choose? So you will see argument over both of these, this one is better than that, or this, um, you will see papers published on either model. Um, the biggest question when we decide which model to use is the, so we are assuming this um, uh, random in an unrestricted situation. Is this thing really random? Is that interaction really random? Or does it have some kind of fixed effect? Um, from the interaction. What is the actual scenario? So we have to understand the reality of the design of experiment. If this is a, the interaction is really a random factor, then we use unrestricted. If it has some fixed effect, then we use uh, restricted. Now, how do I know that um, this thing is random? It's very simple. Basically, think about this. Um, you are running a study with A and B, and then you run a study, collect some sample, um, analyze the data. You run the study again, collect some sample, analyze the data. If you see that every time you replicate this study, the, the AB interaction results changes, that means every time you are getting something weird, something different meaning that this guy is a random guy. Now, if you, if you do the experiment and again and again, and every time you see the exact same results for a B interaction, meaning that it has some fixed effect. Um, so you really don't have to choose between these two model before you decide on it on an experiment, it's not gonna change the experiment. Uh, it will change the data analysis and also the interpretation of the result. Um, uh, so 
you, we can decide this on the data. So once we collect the data, you can simply divide into half and run the F statistics and then um, another half. If you see a different result for A and B every time you kind of split the data, then it is a random thing and it should be treated as random. Therefore, it's an unrestricted model. I actually wanted to make this bold, but anyway. So it is an unrestricted model. If it behaves like a random factor in a uh, an experiment, then it is an um, unrestricted model. Now, if you see that every time you run this study, you get some kind of fixed type of same kind of situation, same kind of result for AB, then you treat that as a restricted model and use the restricted model. But most software um, can do either of these. Uh, you can name SAS, Minitab, SPSS, uh, Design Expert, JMP, any software can do analyze both models these days. Um, sometimes it will not produce the exact F statistics, but that is a different thing. We'll talk about that later. But uh, any software can switch between these two models and then produce the analysis for you. But remember, most software like Minitab, JMP, SAS, they somehow default unrestricted model. Um, so you'll have to change that to restricted if you want to get the analysis for the restricted model. Um, it's not that the unrestricted is better, that's why they have default unrestricted, I guess they just have to uh, do one of them. In fact, some people will argue that the restricted model is more, more kind of uh, generic. If you look at the restricted model mean square table, and this is the unrestricted model mean square table, um, look at this, so factor C is random here, Factor C is random. If you look at this F statistics for factor C, it is using the experimental error, whereas the unrestricted model, it is using some combinations of um, stuff like the interaction of AC, BC, minus ABC as the divisor for the F statistics. And there is no exact F statistics for this unrestricted model. Um, so, um, the restricted is in fact more, I would say, uh, gener generalized and it has, uh, um, in terms of analysis, it actually, um, I would say better. It is producing more exact F statistics than this unrestricted one. However, the choice between restricted versus unrestricted should not be guiding by the uh, convenience of the statistics because it produces more exact statistics, we shouldn't be choosing a restricted. What I'm trying to say here is um, those software that leave unrestricted as a default, I'm not sure why it is such, but um, there is no argument, a strong argument on um, unrestricted model that is better than the restricted. Um, the choice will be always based on the practical scenario whether this AB is actually a random factor in reality. Now generally, again come to that randomness. If you think about experimental unit, which is, a, which is the random error. Now experimental errors are generally, we hire or we use experimental units, they are identical twins. They're very, very similar. Experimental units are so homogeneous. We expect almost zero variation between the experimental units. Now, this is a random factor, or generally random factor. It doesn't have a treatment. So we really don't expect a huge effect from the random number. So these random variations, we really don't expect a whole lot of thing from them, even though they are included when we are doing this uh, F statistics for C. If there is a huge impact variance in the uh, levels of the random factors, that means there could be something else going on. It could be treated as a fixed factor rather than just a random phenomena. So in most real um, wall situation when experiment is well thought through and designed, there probably will not be much difference between these two models, whether you apply restricted or unrestricted 
Um, so I would say this is more kind of like a theoretical discussion than in the actual application. However, we should know and you can play between these two model. And then finally, when you analyze the data and make the conclusions, you can make the conclusion based on what you think is the most appropriate for that experimental situation. So it is more um, valid result in that say or analysis of the data.